Good morning, fellow privateers. Hope everyone had a great weekend. It's sunny here in the Midwest. A bit of rain. People are golfing. Spring has sprung, which is nice after a fairly long winter. Uh, welcome to the the week ahead video and uh, recap of any events over the weekend and highlights from the previous week. Overall, it was a, a fairly quiet week, and we'll get to the charts. I was just looking at some of the headlines and whatnot over the weekend. Uh, China reserves were actually increased. Their dollar reserves increased. I don't think that was a, a huge surprise. Um, Trump was out tweeting, telling the Fed to end QT. He's on full dove mode right now. So bring on QE. Um, you know, it's just, it's brutal when you've got the political Republicans and Trump, you know, putting pressure on the Fed's independence. And we've talked about that ad nauseum, but that's the way it is with this administration. As far as, um, you know, not much else really over the weekend, um, news-wise. As far as how markets performed, Last week, we have uh, the euro was pretty much unchanged. Dollar, dollar yen was up, um, was up about. I can get rid of some of these lines. It was up about just under one percent, and you know, kind of risk on mode, which uh, you you know is expected when you have uh, what we saw in the equity market, which was pretty much a straight ramp higher. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get to these, uh, I'm trying to get my charting working. Here we go. So anyhow, yeah, so dollar yen was up about 0.8%. Uh, British pound was unchanged. Dollar Swiss was up 0.4%. Aussie was pretty much unchanged. Dollar cat up 0.3%. The big mover in G10 was New Zealand dollar. This is obviously on the back of RBNZ, sounding uh, increasingly dovish. Um, so that would, that would be the biggest mover in G10. And it's interesting. So we, I think I tweeted this out. I don't remember. You can see these blue bars here. We had two inside back to back inside days. And then you can see what happened once we took out, um, Thursday's low, which was 67.48. And that kind of coincided. You had the 200 day down at 67.35. So that, that's a pretty weak close. You know, looking back, we haven't been, we haven't closed down here since uh, kind of early part of second week of February. So that's somewhat interesting. Um, we're looking at the 10-year yields in out of the U.S. Um, well, ha let's, let's stick with currencies here for a little bit. So the euro, um, we had a couple inside days back to back. I think that this could potentially move, and we have a catalyst in the ECB meeting which is on Wednesday this week, oddly enough. Um, again, I'm cleaning up my charts as I get, get through here. But uh, this is it's definitely consolidating. You can see this fractal here and this fractal here, and then two inside days. My guess is we start, uh, we start taking a look at this old low at 111.75. Um, and if we do get a clean break there, and that would coincide with dollar index, uh, which was you know up a little bit, um, on the week, just marginally so. But if we start breaking above 97.70, 97.80, um, and that would put pressure on the euro down through that 111.75. That the first target's really 111, and then I could see it going all the way to 110 in the euro, and the the DXY up to up, probably up to close to 100 um, on the initial pop. But you know we are kind of just waiting, waiting for the levels to trigger. We're not going to try to front run these things. Um, we have trade talks continuing next week. Um, you know, a lot of market participants think it's pretty much priced in. You know, is it indeed risk positive or is it one of these, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact? At the end of the day, the market is still paralyzed. And I have discussed this ad nauseum. Um, by both the trade talks, extensions, and 
now, and now Brexit looking like it could be extended. Um, our friend Greg McKenna, in his weekly note, spoke, uh, or he wrote about uh, all the negative energy he's feeling in the Twittersphere, which, uh, you know, we can, we can attest to as, you know, we, we are tweeting more and more, becoming more vocal on Twitter, trying to get our opinions out there, our trade ideas out there. And we're getting some great feedback from followers. Um, our, 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 we've increased our followers quite a bit. And I, I think it's because of the quality of people we're following. And I, I think our content is, you know, is more relevant to, you know, having, you know, a hundred years of experience amongst my fellow privateers. Um, and we've seen this movie before. We've seen this low vol regime, um, you know, many, many times over the years. And, you know, we, we, we try to stay optimistic. We try to stay front foot. And it's very difficult when things aren't moving around. So I get it. I get the frustration. I see it in you know people that I'm surrounded by. Um, we see it more and more on Twitter, you know, and even some really experienced um, people that are following us and the, uh, that we follow. Um, you know, it's not getting to the point. It, it feels like it's getting to the point where people are just throwing in the towel and they're they're just waiting for some catalyst and then they'll jump on, you know, if fall picks up. But um, you got to continue to do your homework. As Greg McKenna was saying, you have to trade the market that is in front of you. I think that is great advice. Um, you can't force things. You can't front run breakouts of, you know, multi-month ranges. You really, really just have to be patient. And this is something that we stress pretty much on a daily basis. Um, the market will come back. Uh, we've said in the past that volatility is mean reverting, that, um, you know, it eventually things will pick up. It may come out of nowhere. There may not be a catalyst. It might just be uh, complacency levels at, you know, all time highs and, and people throwing in the towel. And that's when we're here and we're ready to pounce. Um, so, you know, we try to ignore the negativity that we see in people's responses. Um, this is a time in, during the cycle where traders start blaming external factors on their poor performance. And when you're doing that, it's, it's time to take a break and you should just step away from the screens. You know, so that's, that's advice that we can give. Like I said, we've seen this many, many times to, I remember back in 2005, it looked like it was the end of the world, you know, 2014, um, just multiple periods where there's several months of sideways price action and nothing going on. And, and people just complaining about how bad the market is. You know, you have to you have to be an adult about this. If you're a professional trader, you need to step in and find what markets are moving, because there are there are things moving around, and try to get your head around the theme. Well, you know, what is the narrative? And uh, you know, don't blame the market. Don't blame your execution platform for getting got stopped out at the highs or lows. Because you know what, over the years, there's been many, many times when I had a stop, I was short something, I had a stop, it went five pips through, the machine didn't trigger it, I wake up the next morning, it's down 100 pips, and those are the ones that everyone seems to forget. They always remember the ones where they're stopped at the highs or lows, and they're bitching and moaning about the fill to their counterparty, and they all forget the good ones, and there's been, there those probably more than outweigh the negative ones, but that's just how that's just how people are are wired, and uh, you know, especially many traders that I know. Um, anyhow, enough of that. Let's get to the. Uh, I had to get that off my chest because I I can sense a frustration in Twitter sphere. I can sense it in our own um, peers. You know, people that we're speaking to on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, we get it. It's tough. It's a tough market. Anyhow, speaking of, compla speaking of complacency, here we are. Just shy of 2,900 in the S&P is a complete 
freaking round trip, you know, no doubt at this at the, uh, now, unless there's some disastrous trade headline, there is no doubt we're going to go out and test these old highs at 2945, uh, 2947, you know, probably a marginal new high and then a 50 point pullback. That would be expected. Um, daily sentiment is quite high, both in NASDAQ and, uh, and S&Ps, as one would expect. Uh, I think they're both around 91 or 93. Um, we're going to start, uh, well, I'll talk about this at the end of the video, but um, yeah, so the DSIs are, are, are quite high in S&Ps and NASDAQ, and this is something we follow closely and we use it as um, kind of sh gets us to shift directions. Um, you know, it's certainly not a like an immediate tradable signal, but when things are over massively overbought in the, the case of the S&P and NASDAQ and the sentiment is, you know, anywhere over 80, this is when it, this kind of, it gets us on our radar and we start looking for shorter term um, reversals and exhaustion and loss of momentum. And that's when we like to get involved. And it, it tends to work very well if you, um, if you use it as kind of an overlay to your whatever other indicators um, you're using to enter and exit positions. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, this is looking, this is looking like we've go test the highs. I mean, it's only another 40, 50 points. It's not that big a deal. I mean, it's just kind of ramped up, you know, all year long. Um, oil's another one that's kind of interesting. This is, uh, you know, we're, we're making new highs for this whole move. Let's run a fib on this because this looks kind of interesting. And, you know, just eyeballing it, my guess is that, uh, you know, we are getting, pretty close if you're going what is that that's that october high um yeah i was going to say we're, we're getting pretty close to the two two-thirds fibo which comes in just under 64 dollars and that was some targets too i think it was some elliott wave targets that i read about um we'll be looking to fade this area right up in here 63 70 to 64 dollars um it's about another week or so where seasonals for oil start to turn down coming from our friends at one of the Swiss banks that we speak to. So uh, th this one's definitely on our radar, looking for opportunities to sell it. Um, but I think, you know, with the overall uh, risk on tone, that can continue higher. Um, th the biggest movers last week, uh, WTI was actually up 5%. The DAX was up 4%. The S&P was up 2%. New Zealand dollar was down uh, around 1% on the RBNZ. Uh, dovishness, we'll take a look at that real quick. Uh, let's take a look at Aussie Yen. You can see Aussie Yen, which is a risk on barometer, highly correlated with the, uh, with the uh, equities. And what did this do here? Yeah, so uh, Aussie Yen was up about 1%, but this is interesting. Um, I just am seeing this now. Pretty good doji type uh, bar on uh, on Friday, even with equities closing on their dead balls highs, and uh, and dollar yen was up just shy of one percent at one eleven sixty nine, I believe it was a close. Um, one of the other things that we're going to start doing is I've got this now in charting, should be in here. Low chart layout inside outside. There it is. Uh, give me one sec so we can load it up. Uh, We'll start putting this out, hopefully daily. Um, what I was referring to earlier, I'm going to start trying to do um, potentially daily reports, um, just kind of recaps uh, important news headlines, um, any important uh, economic data misses. I'm not going to. We're not going to report. Um, you know, if ISM was expected 54.5 and it came in 54.6 we're not gonna say that. we're we're gonna we're gonna um focus on when there's big economic data point misses and we can even add the csi page um the economic surprise index um into our daily daily notes so I, I, we'll probably start out doing i actually might try to get to one today um but we'll start we'll start attempting to send these things out, uh, if not daily, uh, you know, a few times a week, especially when there's something of um, real importance. So 
this page here, um, let me try to re resize this. This is kind of ugly looking. Let's see here. My charting is very, um, it's very strange right now. Here we go. Let's do it manually. Hope you can see this. Uh, still having some problems with my video, with the video quality. I got to get to the bottom of this. Uh, anyhow, we had a big outside reversal day higher in crude oil with the highest daily close in a long time. Um, we had a, uh, in the 30 year, that's this chart here, uh, we had an outside reversal day higher. Again, that's interesting with equities closing on the highs. This is in the, this is the futures, not the yield. So a move lower in the 30 year of the yield, uh, bearish engulfing in the 30 year yield or bullish engulfing in the 30 year future. Um, and then we had uh, that was kind of it for Friday. Those are daily daily bars. Um, then I'm also looking at weekly, where we have uh, this is Euro Swissy. Let me move this thing. It's driving me crazy. Here's a weekly Euro Swissy after a couple big down weeks, closing near the lows, closed on the lows. We had an inside week. That's kind of expected. That's a big move for Euro Swissy, which is a you know more of a mean reverting type pair. Um, and if we look at uh, Euro Sterling, you can see we had, you know, a fairly large range, which is expected from any Sterling cross, but it was inside. It, it was an inside week. And what we like to do with the inside weeks is we like to play the breaks, and it can be at any time frame. It could be a one minute, it could be a five minute hourly, not that we trade five minute and one minutes, but um, we do pay attention when you see these inside bars, and we start breaking if the next bar starts breaking above the previous bars high or low, uh, there tends to be some follow through. Um, so that's Euro Sterling inside week. Here is the British pound, uh, kind of an ugly close, ugly looking uh, week, but inside the previous week. So again, we could, you know, you could, I think I have this, uh, I don't know if that's in there, hold on, let me see. I had an alert set for that we would be looking to play the break of 129.86, which was on kind of late Friday, or on the top side, maybe positive Brexit spin above 132. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll get a template that identifies uh, inside or outside days or weeks, and then the, the levels, the, the highs and lows, so you can have it all in one place. Um, I'm just taking some notes here because this is some, this is a work in progress and it might take me it might take me all week to really get this this stuff out so be patient but I think it'll be it'll be very good um, you know once we have the template in place it'll be a very good uh, kind of one pager we're going to try to keep these notes one page we know that the traders have about a five minute attention span if that and you know a lot of the research that we get it's just too lengthy and we're going to try to consolidate and curate um, these, all this research we're getting and, and some of the things that we look at on a daily basis and try to kind of get it in a one, one page of paper. Maybe it's two. Um, but yeah, I think that'll be good. So, you know, we'll be looking at the British pound, you know, trading outside of last week's range for uh, near term direction. The New Zealand dollar versus yen was inside. Um, the dollar max was an inside week, as you can see there. Um, dollar sing is another emerging market ish type indicator or dollar Asia indicator and that's dollar sing that was inside and then dollar Turkey which you know we did have that couple massive weeks so having an inside week last week is is really no big surprise because we've had we had two really big um, you know news driven uh, news driven and then look at the South African round this is kind of interesting dollar Dollar Rand had a perfect doji, went to the high of this little cycle, and then it kind of collapsed last week. Um, I believe Dollar Turkey, um, yes, indeed it is. It's uh, the S&P says Turkey's rating not at risk of a downgrade. Um, and it dropped from, I think close at 563, and it dropped down to 555. It's not showing up yet because we're still a little bit early. Um, another 20 minutes or so before 
some of these trading view um, prices show up. Um, let's take a look at the economic calendar. Um, just give me one second here. Let, let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, loading the other charts of fractals because I kind of like this. This is, this does have um, that's hourly daily. There's dollar yen. Let's just run through a couple of these other ones here. Yeah, so so dollar turkey looks like it's around. It says 563, but it's it's trading 555. I think it was a low. Um, dollar yen maybe a little bit of loss of momentum on Friday. Uh, dollar China not doing a whole lot, kind of in a range. Euro dollar we talked about, you know, just this massive range. It hates it above 114. It hates it below 112. But the downside for us uh, is becoming more and more appealing. Aussie dollar is kind of flatlined. Kiwi is still a sell on rallies. Cable, I'll look, be looking to sell a break of these old lows. Uh, and that's a 200-day down here, too, at 129.76, which coincides perfectly with this uh, this old low. And we had a little go at it on Friday late, and then it bounced back up and closed at 130.35. So, yeah, certainly... Um, Certainly something to be paying attention to. As far as the economic calendar goes, I'm going to go to our friends at uh, Forex Live because they've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good rundown. I would highly recommend it. You guys can, you know, you can look at it yourself. I, I have Bloomberg. I've got, you know, a few other um, websites that I look at for the economic data. But if you look here, um, let's find what you can see right here. This is Wednesday, and we've got a lot on the calendar today. We've got Corota speaking. We've got um, IP out of the UK and the trade balance. We've got GDP out of the UK. We have the ECB on a Wednesday, oddly enough. Um, not expecting a ton out of that. Uh, then we got US CPI. I believe we have Norwegian CPI that day too. I don't see that in the calendar, uh, which is important because they've been they they were sounding quite hawkish and uh, you know if they can get a weak uh, CPI print, I think that can be pretty market moving for Euro Norway. Um, you got U.S. and China, or I said yeah, China CPI. You got uh, the ECB on Wednesday. We got the FOMC minutes on Wednesday. We got the e, uh, European Commission summit, and we we also have uh, RBA's De Belle speaking. So Wednesday kind of looks like a big, uh, you know, just look at this. Look at how many things are showing up in this calendar. Um, you know, Thursday we start getting some Fed speakers. Um, let's see what else do we have here trade balance out of China and then Friday to kind of the, to wrap up the week we got Michigan's consumer sentiment and I think that's Eurozone industrial production um, but to start the week if we just get back to your, your morning um, uh, Nothing. Really, nothing. This could be a quiet session for you folks in uh, in Asia. Um, and then you know the European uh, hours. We've got no much German exports. Could be interesting, I guess. Um. Anyhow, so that that should do it. Again, pretty quiet. I'm trying to keep this one short because there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, stick with us as we. Um, you know, just to, to remind you that we will start putting out either, we might start with daily notes, we might do three a week. Um, I need to get the template in place, and uh, once I do that, we will, um, we will put those out on Twitter and on our blog, where you can just click on the link and, you know, you can take a look at it. Um, but I think that would be, be helpful. Um, I'll just show you some of the things that we look at, on a look at on a daily basis that gives us the reason to trade or be or not trade for that matter. And uh, I think it'll be extremely helpful for for all of you. Keeps you involved in the market when you should be. And we'll do, maybe even do some charts of the day. You know, a couple chart patterns. Um, you know, a lot of times the our European video is is talking about the more tactical, shorter term um, setups for that day. Um, you know. I would like to add something that would be more of a, a weekly theme somewhere where 
you can get involved at high probability levels and and um, and put trades on that might last a few days or you know even a couple weeks. So bear with us on that. This is a, a work in progress, something we talked about over the weekend, and um, we're going to need a little bit of time to get it onto our blog. Um, I might have a rough draft of this coming out either uh, probably not today, but uh, perhaps tomorrow. Anyhow, have a great trading week ahead, and you'll hear from us if there's anything worth talking about. All the best. Cheers.